Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, I want to talk about the advances we've been making with aerosol printing. Um, and so today we'll talk a little bit about sort of give sort of an evolution of the process for aerosol printing. We consider the te technology we have now for aerosol printing the second generation aerosol printing technology. And we're continuing to make it better. And we'll talk about some of those things. And we'll talk about the challenges um, that we kind of tried to overcome. And then talk about the advances. Let's keep this up. So people have come to expect the type of images that you see here on the left when they consider aerosol printing. You see a lot of overspray uh, and satellite droplets uh, forming the edges of the line. So the, the line edge quality is typically pretty poor. And what we want to do is challenge everybody because we know that we can do better. And we want people to expect better from aerosol printing. And that's kind of what our goal with the, uh, developing this next generation of technology has been about. And so what we're looking for is the type of lines you see here on the right. These are printed using what we call the nanojet aerosol printing technology. And as you can see, this work was done by Cambridge um, University and published. So here's a reference here if you want to look it up. But this is the type of printing that we're getting today with aerosol printing. So you know, we know that the print quality can be quite good. And we've done this by really improving the technology, eliminate overspray. There's no more satellite droplets. And then we get good clean line edge definition. So how do we do this? We actually were able to have a lot of knowledge when we developed this next generation technology. We worked on the first generation technology. And uh, we actually licensed the technology from Sandia Labs for using, that uses multiple aerodynamic lenses. And that really allowed us to kind of clean up our overspray. Um, we use, uh, most, of, most aerosol generators generate some sort of form of polydispersed aerosol. In this particular case, the droplet sizes range from 0.2 to 5 microns. And then each of the droplets um, in the flow stream focus differently. The different sizes focus differently. So if you use a single aerodynamic lens, you're not going to get everything focusing as you get overspray. And then depending on the design of your printing technology, uh, you'll also get a lot of satellite droplets where a droplet may form and then kind of, kind of get re-released. And they form big droplets that end up on the edge of the printed lines. <coughs> and so what we've done is been able to, using this technology, we've been able to, and the multiple aerodynamic lenses, really improve the printing quality. So this is a, an animation that we put together. It's actually a CFD simulation. Um, but it shows how um, aerosol printing works. So you start off with a, um, an aerosol that's fed into a, a flow cell or a focusing cell um, in a, a, a tube in the center of the uh, focusing cell. Then you surround the uh, aerosol with a sheath gas. So you make a coaxial sheath gas flowing into the system. And then you um, basically pass the aerosol through the sheath uh, covered aerosol gas through a series of aerodynamic lenses. They're just basically holes, orifice. And the sheath gas provides a couple of uh, functions. So the sheath gas um, protects the aerosol from impacting onto the orifice as the aerosols pass through the uh, var various aerodynamic lenses. It also provides a pressure source to actually help focus the aerosols. Um, so in the original, the first generation technology, we used one aerodynamic lens. And you can see you really don't get an optimum focusing here. You get some focusing, but the, there's still the smaller droplets and the medium-sized droplets will still kind of lay, remain at the edges and cause um, overspray and poor line edge quality. And then by going to a second lens or a third lens even, you can get better focusing and um, improved edge quality. And this is the real innovation that um, IDS has done with the technology. So this video here shows um, printing of 30 micron wide uh, silver conductive lines using uh, the NanoJet technology and they have about a 60 micron pitch. This um, video is slightly accelerated by a factor of two, but you can see good lineage quality, um, and, you know, fast printing. We print it up to about 50 millimeters a second. Mm -hmm. Our printing speed is really not so much limited by um, the print head technology, but more of the motion platforms that we use right now. Motion, the motion platforms that we sell is sort of entry level for people to do R&D, but if you work with OEMs and stuff with higher precision, higher performance um, print platforms, you can actually go faster. So oh, one of the, the staples for our, our technology or our testing our technology is we really look at the eight hour stability test and we collect data on our printing over eight hours to show stability. And we um, also advertise about a 20 micron line pitch. We know that customers can get finer, but we're trying to be conservative and not oversell the technology. But typically, most recently we've demonstrated 10, 10 microns with 10 micron uh, spacing or 